watch this road There's a lot to live But you got to choose Well, you used to be singing the blues But now I'm singing the news Howdy, neighbor. Welcome to the Good News Program. I'm your host, Mike Vaughn, and I'm here to share good news with you. On the program today, I want to continue to talk about Jesus, our Savior, right? The fact that he was born into this earth with a mission, and his mission was to be our Savior. Listen to what the Bible says here in Luke 2.11. This is where the angels declared to the shepherds abiding out in the field. For there is born to you this day in the city of David a Savior who is Christ the Lord. So that was the mission of Jesus to come into this world to be our Savior. Now, the Apostle John tells us the extent of his mission. John wrote in 1 John 4, 14, listen, quote, And we have seen and do testify that the Father sent the Son to be the Savior of the world. So the, the extent of his mission was to the whole world. He didn't come just to save the Jews but he come to save the Jews, the Gentiles, everyone. Amen. So thank God he is our Savior. Now, is his name really essential, the name of Jesus? Well, listen to what Acts 4.12 says, Nor is there salvation in any other, for there is no other name under heaven given among men by which we must be saved. So I think his name is pretty important, don't you? And we're going to continue talking about that on the program today when I invite you into the sanctuary here at the Good News Fellowship Church where I shared this with our congregation. But first of all, I want to share one of my favorite Christmas songs that I like to sing entitled, Go Tell It on the Mountain. So I want you to sing along with me, enjoy this teaching segment, and I'll be back in a few moments to pray with you. Stay tuned. And then we have the testimony of Christ's apostles in Acts chapter 5. They were arrested for preaching the gospel. Now, can you imagine that? Being arrested for preaching the gospel? Well, I've seen that right here in America. I've seen individuals preaching out on the street corners be arrested for actually preaching. And, of course, it's, it's a lot worse overseas, but we see a all-out persecution has began on Christianity in America. We see it more and more uh, on the different media outlets. Well, it's, it's nothing new. The apostles, they faced this, and they were arrested by the religious leaders 
for preaching and teaching in the name of Jesus, and they told them. They said, we command you not to teach anymore in that name. Now, I imagine they didn't care if they just went out there and just uh, talked philosophy like the Greeks. They would have been all right. If they went out there, you know, and, and maybe talked about the Old Testament scriptures like some of the scribes and the Pharisees, but they were making the religious people angry because they were using that name. And what's that name? It offended the religious leaders. Now, why did it offend the religious leaders? Well, to begin with, they were the ones that had him hung on the cross. And Peter and John and the apostles told him, told the religious leaders, they said, y'all are the ones that condemned him, and you are the ones that, that hung him on the cross and crucified him. And it's that same one that we stand here today and preach about and teach about. They thought they had killed Jesus, but they didn't. Amen? Because we know he was resurrected, and not only was he resurrected, they had five, six, eight, ten, twelve, and a multitude of Jesuses on their hands through the apostles. Amen? Because they went in his name and in his power. Now, they, they went on to say in verse 30 and 31, the God of our fathers raised up Jesus, whom you slew and hanged on a tree. That's how the scripture says it. Him hath God exalted with his right hand to be a prince and a savior. See their testimony? God raised him up and made him a prince and a what? A savior. The apostle John wrote in his epistle, 1 John 4, 14, quote, and we have seen and do testify that the father sent the son to be what? The savior of North America, South America, Alaska, the whole world. For God so loved the that he gave his only begotten son. It's to the whole world, to all peoples, to all nations, amen? He's a savior of the world. He's not just a teacher. He's not just a prophet, but he is the savior of the world. And if that offends you, I, I, I'm sorry, but it's the truth. He's the savior of the world. Now, most, if not all, of the apostles addressed Jesus as Savior in their letters. Most of them right at the beginning of their letters. They have mentioned something like uh, God, our Father, and the Lord Jesus Christ, our Savior, or our Savior, Lord Jesus Christ. And uh, most of the apostles do that, if not all of them. Now, today, many people want to minimize the name of Jesus or do away with it altogether. As I said, it, it, it seems to offend a lot of people. You know, you can go in a restaurant and, and uh, you can hear people talking to one another and after a while things get kind of noisy. But if somebody says Jesus real loud, it gets quiet. People look around. Who's the fool that would say that in here? Or you wonder what they're thinking, you know? It's becoming more and more politically incorrect to say that name of Jesus. And many Christians are bowing down to the secular society. And they're just keeping their mouth shut. Well, that ain't what you're supposed to do. We're supposed to do like the apostles that went out and spoke his name anyway, that went out and taught in his name anyway. I'm not ashamed of the name of Jesus. No, a, a, a lot of people, you know, it's in the headlines right now about this Duck Dynasty program. Um, most everybody has heard about that uh, by now. And on that program, at the end of the program, they always say a prayer. And many times he says in the name of Jesus. Well, I saw uh, an interview that they had with him one time. 
And he said that A&E came to him and said, we don't want you saying Jesus. He said, you can pray, and you can say, thank you, Lord, and you can say God or our Father, but we don't want you saying Jesus. And you know what he told him? He said, well, if we have to do that, we just won't go on with the show. I'm glad somebody's standing up for the name of Jesus. Somebody's standing up for the truth of the word of God. No. Well, they told him, you see, we have a lot of viewers out there on our network, and we just feel like it might offend some of our viewers. And they might not tune in. No, you know what it is? It's all about this. It's all about money. Because if somebody don't tune in, you see, it hits them in their pocketbook. That's what it all comes down to, it seems, is the almighty dollar. No. But you know what offends me? It offends me when that network and other networks like it use the name of God and the name of Jesus in vain, and they don't think nothing about that, and they don't say nothing about that. I don't hear anybody talking about that. You ever hear somebody say something like, and uh, and. I'm not using this, and I'm not saying this, but just for, for your understanding, oh, Jesus, for Christ's sake. You know what that is? That's using his name in vain. You're using it as a slang word. That is a holy name because it represents him. It's his name. I guess if you're talking about somebody else, it, it might be all right. But he said, the Bible says, don't use the name of the Lord in vain. And that's what it means. Of course, when you put damn on the end of God, that's the same thing. That's using his name in vain. Well, most networks use that, and I don't hear any Christians saying anything about that, much less anybody else. They just go right along with it. No, you know what offends me? It's when they produce shows and programs that glorify adultery and that glorify sin and that have a rape and killing. Th things like uh, The Walking Dead. If you like watching a show like The Walking Dead, my friend, you need to get on your knees and pray and ask Jesus to come into your heart and life. Because shows like that are not of God and you don't need that in your spirit if you're a believer. Shows that glorify death and darkness and evil and sin. And I've never seen it before like the witchcraft that's coming out in media. Well, we saw it years ago uh, beginning to come out in the cartoons. Magic, black magic and wizardry and stuff like this. But folks, after 10 years, it is amazing how it's gotten worse and worse and worse. They have programs now at the time there were children or anybody can see them, and it's witches that levitate stuff through the air and call curses down on other people. I mean, it's just plain out and out black magic and witchcraft. But I don't hear anybody saying anything about that, that it offends me. That's what offends me. Amen. It's time for Christians to stand up and let their voice be heard and say, I'm not going to put up with this because it offends me. Well, you need, you need, need to keep it down now. You don't, you don't want to offend nobody of that group over there. Well, what about us? What about the Christians? I, I never forget years ago, uh, my wife went into one of our local banks and they didn't have a Christmas tree there. And you don't have to have a Christmas tree. I mean, it, it ain't nothing that whether you have one or whether you don't. It's just a traditional thing. And we don't worship trees, by the way. But she went into a, a, a bank and they didn't have a tree. And she asked her why. And they said, well, it, it offended some folks, you know, of another group. And she told them, she said, well, it offends me that you don't have one. Well, a few days later, she went back in there and they had a tree up. We didn't they? Uh-huh. She let her voice be heard. She said, it offends me. What about me? 
Why do us Christians have to be the one to bow down to everybody else and to keep our mouth shut? Why do we have to do that? They didn't do that in the early church. They went out there in the street and they said, in the name of Jesus, be healed. In the name of Jesus, Satan, get out of that person. In the name of Jesus, have eternal life. And then they was all saying, shut up, the religious people now. Shut up, be quiet. We don't want to hear that. But they kept on anyway. They kept on anyway. And they got arrested one time, and but they didn't care. And they eventually let them out. And you know what they did? They went back out in the street again and started preaching in. God will give you the boldness to stand up in the times of trouble like today. Amen? And speak the name of Jesus. Pray the name of Jesus. Share the name of Jesus with people. And it's amazing the things that will happen. Hallelujah. The name of Jesus is everything to the Christian. And it's so necessary for the unbeliever. Listen to Acts 4 and 12. Listen very carefully. Nor is there salvation in any other. For there is no other name under heaven given among men by which we must be saved. Are you a Christian? Do you believe the Bible? Then that's what you believe right there. Praise the Lord, friend. I hope you're enjoying that teaching segment talking about our Savior, Jesus Christ. Yes, thank God. He is our Savior. He was sent into this world to save us from our sin. His name is Jesus, the greatest name that was ever given. And there's all power and all authority in his name. Oh, one of my favorite verses is John 3, 16. It tells us that God sent his son into this world and whoever believes in him does not have to perish, but we can have eternal life. Have you trusted Jesus for that gift of eternal life? And you know, it's a free gift. He did all the work. All you have to do is receive it. And if, you, if you've never received that gift, I want you to pray with me right now. Say, Heavenly Father, that's right, pray with me. Heavenly Father, I trust in Jesus right now. I believe he is the Son of God. He died on the cross for the sins of all and for my sins. And I accept you, Jesus, and what you did for me. I confess you with my mouth as my Lord and my Savior. I believe in my heart that God raised you from the dead and you are alive today. And I surrender my heart and life to you to live for you from now on. In Jesus' name I pray, amen and amen. Friend, if you prayed that prayer, the Lord heard you and something supernatural happened. You didn't see lightning, you didn't hear thunder, but something supernatural happened. He breathed his life on the inside of you, and you have become a new creature in Christ Jesus. You are a family member now. You on the inside. You have a place at the table. Amen. And that's something to rejoice about. And I want to rejoice with you by sending you this free little gift. It's a little book I like to send out entitled, Now What? Now that you prayed that prayer, now that you invited Christ into your heart, what do you do now? Well, this will tell you what to do. It's time to begin to grow in the Lord. This will teach you how to uh, study your Bible, how to pray, and it's got a lot of helpful scriptures in there. So call me today for your free copy at 888-429-2280. That's a toll-free number, 888-429-2280. 2280. If I'm not in the office when you call, leave it on the machine. You can leave your address, but please leave a callback number in case I don't understand all your information. I can get back to you because I want to get this book into your hand because I know it will help you tremendously. Call me right now, 888-429-2280. Praise God. I want to share with you about our next concert coming up here at the Good News Fellowship Church in Tickfall, Louisiana, and it will be January the 3rd will be our next concert, 2020. This is 
the, uh, this will be our first concert of the brand new year. Isn't that something? And my special guest will be Dennis Calmes from Denham Springs, Louisiana. And that's sort of our local area here. And he is an anointed Southern gospel singer and you will be blessed. So put it on your calendar to come out and be with us January the 3rd, 6.30 p.m. And we always have some kind of good country cooking. So bring your appetite as well. For more information, go to our website at mvmgoodnews.com. I want to mention our special mail offer for December 2019. All of our music CDs and DVDs are 50% off for the month of December 2019. Now that includes my country Christmas CD. And I know you're going to want to get your, your copy of this CD. Maybe you want to even get some of these for gifts or maybe some of the other CDs. What better gift to give than gospel music? Because it doesn't just bring good sound in music, but it brings the message of truth and hope and peace to people. And so this is the time to get as many as you want because it's 50% off. Call me at 888-429-2280. Once again, that's 888-429-2280 to let me know um, the ones that you want to order. And uh, maybe uh, you need uh, someone to talk with you. We'll tell you the different CDs and DVDs that we have available. And uh, I think I have about uh, nine or 10 different ones and uh, maybe uh, three or four DVDs and such as that. So call us at 888-429-2280. And if I'm not in the office, please leave your callback number and say you want to get in on that special offer, have someone call me back and they will call you back real soon. That's 888-429-2280. I never like to close our program without saying a special thanks to my partners. Thank you, partners for praying for this ministry daily. Thank you for giving financially as you do each and every month. It's because of you that we can continue with our television and radio outreaches. We appreciate your faithfulness so much. And if God is speaking to you, those of you that hadn't become a Good News Partner yet, please consider becoming a partner and help us bring the gospel to the nations of the world. God is opening many doors for us, but we can't go through them without your help. So pray about it, and then I'll know that you'll do whatever the Lord tells you to do. And this uh, time right now is a special time for me that I get to pray for you my friends and my partners, because I believe God hears and answers prayer. So I want you to get ready, especially if you uh, are sick and you need a healing. If you're believing God for a certain miracle or breakthrough in your life, I believe that miracles are get re getting ready to happen in your life. So pray with me, Heavenly Father. I release my faith right now on behalf of my friends and partners. I thank you for healing those that are sick. I thank you for touching those, Lord, that need a miracle. I thank you for a divine breakthrough in the lives of my friends and partners right now. Heal the sick, strengthen the weak, set the captives free by your power and anointing. I receive it in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Thank you so much for tuning in today. I trust that you enjoyed our time spent together. I know I have. And I want to leave you with a song today. Uh, I want to sing about a way in a manger, talking about that divine birth of our Lord Jesus Christ. And I'll see you next time right here on the Good News Program.
I appreciate your interest in my songs and music. If you would like more information concerning my music or preaching CDs, you can write and request a product list. Send all correspondence to Mike Vaughn Ministries, Post Office Box 550, Tickfall, Louisiana, 70466, or email us at mvmgoodnews at aol.com, and our website is mvmgoodnews.com. Thanks for sharing this time with us today. We hope you have been blessed and encouraged. Remember this program is brought to you by our friends and partners. Pray and ask God what you can do to help us spread the good news. Just roll.